Hello guys, welcome. I'm Alyssa and thank you for joining me. Today is going to be a casual rehab video. I have a few plants that I want to uh, take care of. I'm going to be uh, either chopping them back, rehabbing in the sense that I'm propagating them, uh, repotting them, just getting them kind of fixed and situated so that they can start growing better again. I have a total of three plants that I want to do, but depending on how long they take, I may only do two of those for this video because the other one will be, two of them will be a similar process. This one I'm going to do first might take the longest, but I'm going to see how long this one takes. I'm looking a little crazy because <laughs> uh, we're going to get uh, messy with this video. <laughs> Uh, so I hope you don't mind. I'm going to show you the first plant that I am working with and then we will get started. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, this poor plant. This plant, you guys, has been on a journey with me. I cannot grow this plant. It's had a huge setback recently, and I think the fungal issue that happened with some of my plants got a hold of these plants that I want to do for today's video. I'm pretty sure that's what happened because I don't know what else it could be besides a fungal issue. My alocasias had some kind of root shock where they just lost a lot of the root system so i imagine something's going on in here and i put this in this planter several months ago and this is a gloriosum philodendron i don't know if i said that and at that point it seemed to be recovering and doing fine because it was a rehab from root rot oh way over a year ago maybe a year and a half ago i think i have two older videos on this plant they're really really old because uh, yeah, this plant has been on a long journey with me. These are all new leaves from when I had rehabbed it a long time ago. But yeah, I have a feeling we're going to be cutting a lot of these leaves off and propping this chunk in here. It's like one big chunk. Uh, but I put it in a rectangular planter to continue growing. And I don't know, the leaves are very sad. It had thrips last summer. Um, it caught thrips and then ever since then it just hasn't grown um, it would grow a couple new leaves and then it just like they get stuck and the last i would say three to four leaves that have tried to come out just don't unfurl they rip and again i think it's just something maybe fungal so yeah, I might be cutting this plant back to nothing. We will see. I had this stake in here to support some of the vines because they were just so wobbly. All right, this might get loud for a second. I don't have the best luck with crawlers. My mommy has had several issues as well. I have that one, the top cut in stratum, but I'm honestly thinking about moving some of these philodendron to pond uh, because I feel like every time I try soil, just something happens to the plant. I don't know what it is. Mm, the roots don't look good at all. Yeah, it's just that dried rot stuff or root fry. I don't, I honestly don't know. Same thing with my alocasias. There's just no healthy root system. I would seriously love to know what happened. So we're not going to be able to move to any kind of soil. Uh, so I might re-root this plant in some stratum temporarily, and then we will pot it maybe into pond is what I'm thinking. 
So all these roots are like not good. I'm going to cut here. We're just going to cut that off. I've already sanitized these, but I have more alcohol here. So you can see this here and then the space. So it's literally grown one, two, three, four, at least four leaves that have not grown since uh, the last like full leaf. I do love like philodendron gloriosum. I think it's a beautiful plant and I have the glorious on a moss pole. That's much easier. So if you're debating between getting a gloriosum and a glorious, definitely go with the hybrid, the glorious, because I've had no issues with my glorious. And this one again has just been a really sad plant in my collection for a long time. I got this actually as a plant mail in, I think it was, was it January of 2021, 20, I think? Cause it was a birthday plant mail. So this plant, this same plant is like two and a half years old. And it just didn't do well initially from the beginning. It got rot and I don't know. I'm beginning to think it just wasn't a healthy plant. I'm thinking if I try to put this in pond right now, it might, it might not do well just because it's been living in soil for so long. I kind of would rather rehydrate it maybe in the stratum first is what I'm thinking. But I moved my fry deck over to pond like from soil and it was doing the same thing. And it did well. I definitely had some root shedding though. We don't have much left of a root system. That's all that's left. I want to get rid of this bumpy base here. And then I'm thinking about maybe just chopping it in half and doing like two big chunks. I think I might do that. This is an exacto knife. It just makes a clean cut. All right. Even though this bottom part has a little roots, the whole stem just looks brown. So we are going to cut this off. See, we're gonna slice like right through here and just chuck this piece. Not cut clean, so no rot or anything with that chunk. And I'm thinking about, I don't like how long this has gotten since there's no leaves, but I'm going to chop it in the middle, which may activate some of these nodes to grow. I'm thinking about just doing it right here. So yeah. <laughs> right here in the middle is where I'm thinking about just slicing so that I have two even chunks. Yes, I'm going to go try not to get a node. Okay, right where this root is, I'm going to go right under that. Okay. 
like right here in between those two. Okay. So you have this chunk now and this chunk. That is definitely, I'm gonna leave that out to callus uh, before I stick this in stratum. That is a big chunk that needs to dry. These roots are all going to shrivel up, but I don't care. It'll grow new roots. Now I just have to decide what leaves I wanna keep because some of these leaves are ugly. This leaf is a sad, ugly leaf. I'm gonna cut this off. These two leaves don't look bad, but this one, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one too. All right, so that is our one chunk here with two decent leaves. They don't look bad and it has a root um, that it'll grow from. And then there's several nodes along here that it will shoot out new growth from. So that is the one little guy. So I'm just gonna lay him out down here to like dry and callus, and then I will rinse these leaves off too uh, so that they are clean. I don't think I've actually cleaned these leaves in a while. It's been a while because I've had mites on this plant. Oh shoot, oh. I just snapped that leaf. Man, I didn't mean to do that. Darn it. Oh well, looks like it's a one leaf wonder now. I'm glad I didn't break them both off. I don't really like uh, messing with just chunks because they take so long to grow. I would really love to do this one again, but you can see all the little nodes along here that can activate. They're like little bumps that you can see. So there's several nodes. Uh, I don't like this leaf. They're both gonna be one leaf wonders. I don't like that leaf because that leaf looks really bad. So I think I will rinse these really quick with water because I want these ends to dry and if I rinse them, I can still rinse them after they dry. I think it'll be fine. I'll just rinse them really quick over my water and just spray with some Castile soap uh, and then let these kind of dry for a bit and then we will stick these in some stratum. So this Gloriosum is a, was a part of this one that I did in that video. Uh, it's in soil and this one seems to be doing fine. Uh, it does have some tiny leaves still that I think I might uh, cut off. I was gonna repot this one, but I think instead what I'll do is leave this one growing in soil. It's kind of close to the edge, but when I go to transfer this to pond, I might add this in here and have like, have like three chunks of Gloriosum growing in pond. I feel like um, I want to do that. I'm going to get rid of a couple of these baby leaves here that just kind of look bad. There. And it put out a new leaf recently and it's very uh, beautiful and healthy. I don't really see anything wrong with this one. Some of these older leaves look a little sus. Uh, but it dries out really quickly in my cabinet. I'm watering this guy at least one, one to two times a week. Um, I don't know if this guy got infected either. I'm hoping not, but it's growing. It seems to be somewhat happy. Uh, so we're gonna leave this one in there and then yeah, I'll probably pot it up with this one.
next we have is this. This is all that's left of my rattlesnake Calathea. And it's very sad. It has a fungal issue. It does have some new shoots wanting to grow, but I'm going to show you what the fungal issue looks like on this plant. Again, I think it was from the rainwater and the soil is infected or something, but uh, these leaves look pretty bad on it. Okay, you can see they're very unhealthy fungal issue. This is more than just like normal Calathea crisping browning. Do you see? Every leaf has like a fungal issue. Because you have to understand in my environment, plants don't grow like this unless there's something wrong. Because I have very happy Calatheas and Marantas. This plant room is very warm. It's humid. Well, for the most part, it's less humid now. Uh, it's like ideal growing conditions for a lot of plants. So if something isn't growing well, then something is wrong. Uh, it more or less comes down to a root health issue or fungal issue or pest issue. Uh, that's what it comes down to. I don't think anything in my soil was contaminated. I think it was the rainwater. Um, oh, so before I dump this out, I'm cutting off all the leaves that are affected, all of them. Because there's, there's no coming back from leaf damage. Now it'll grow new shoots in time. Like some new shoots are popping out. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> uh, so that's what we're left with. So let me dump this out. I'm just so glad my Mekoyana crossing my fingers doesn't seem to be bothered because I also like did my Mekoyana around that time too. I upsized it. Yeah, all these plants, the root system just like is fried in every single one of them. But you can see all the healthy, uh, there's like healthy shoots down in there. So this plant isn't dead by any means. It only seems to be healthy on the edge. And that's really the only way you can propagate Calathea is through root division. I am gonna do some I am going to go in here with my X-Acto knife. <laughs> uh, you guys are probably thinking, why don't I just trash this and start over and buy a new one? And I totally could, but I just feel like that's not working. I want to save this guy. My Mekoyana uh, suffered a severe spider mite infection. It was one of my earlier Calatheas at the old house and it was down to a nub pile of dirt and it's my happiest, most beautiful Calathea. So if that can grow back, then uh, any of them can grow back. It's just going to take time. Like it was rehabbing for six plus months uh, before it did anything. It was just a pile of dirt for like six months. So any rhizomes that I can save, I will rinse off really well. This dead, uh, dead one, I'm not saving.
There's a little rhizome, the little potato thing. So we're gonna save that chunk. Alright, that is another chunk here. And there was one more piece that had some green. Basically just pulling apart uh, each little tuber that has green on it. So I'm not going to worry about any more of this in here. This is a goner. So this is our healthy remnants right here, all green. So what I'm going to do is um, I might soak this in hydrogen peroxide instead of like a fungicide. I don't want to like soak the roots in a fungicide. So I think I'll just soak this in water hydrogen peroxide for a little bit. Yeah, I might do this germanthia a different day because again, it, I might just do that one on my own time. It's not that unhealthy. It's just, I just need to like refresh in the soil, like take all the old soil off, spray it down um, and replant it. And I think it would be okay. Uh, so yeah, let me rinse this guy and soak it in some hydrogen peroxide. Then we will pot up our gloriosum into stratum. And then we'll put this one, pop this one into a fresh mix, and then I think we'll uh, be done for this video. Back in action. I have a lot going on here. So we have our Gloriosum and our Rattlesnake Calathea. So yeah, let's go ahead and do these in stratum. Two separate pieces. And I clean out my uh, Starbucks cups. They're like plastic cups. I feel like these would work well as far as like getting the node on top that one's gonna have to go like right on top hi luna looks like it's getting ready to storm out there so i have used stratum i have this container and this is my most recent container of used stratum i was letting it air dry i just had it like spread out on a big bin so i have two containers of stratum um those held a lot of my alocasia props that were in my cabinet is where most of those, most of the stratum came from. And then I keep my new stratum in here and I like to mix some new in with the old. So that way that um, I'm not wasting it, but I'm going to be filling these to the top pretty much. So I am going to be using a lot of this old stratum. I just wanted to kind of pour this down in here. And I've never had any issues with use, reusing stratum before. Oh. I 
I mean, if I can reuse it, then I definitely will. So what we're going to do is kind of pile the root system down in here and leave our chonk piece kind of on top like that. And then, yeah, we're just going to fill up. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh though. What I'll probably do is take like a little uh, steak, I think. I'll have to get like a clip just to help support that so it doesn't tip over. And then I'll have to water this, which I forgot my water. I got everything else except my water, of course. <laughs> I'm going to sit him here for a second and I'll come back to him. Oh shoot. Oh darn it. See the whole thing's flying out. Oh, I thought the entire root system came out. All right, let me go ahead and get my water because this is more stable once it's actually watered and then I'll get a clip and I'll be right back. Cause you're gonna fly right out. Ah, stay. I am a hot mess. <laughs> okay. You are just going to have to stay down in here. Let's take our clip. And then let's add a little bit more on top on the sides. Okay, I think that'll stay like that. And then I'm just gonna add water, probably like three-fourths of the way. Just like that. I bet you these leaves are going to start perking up and doing so much better once it actually gets some water hydration. Now that these roots are going to be living in stratum for a while. I'm going to be really excited to pot these back up because I've always loved Gloriosum. I just doesn't want to do well for me for some reason. I don't know. So we used one container of used stratum. That one is literally going to be right up at the top. There's <laughs> not like a way to do this <laughs> without making a mess. I wouldn't need to use so much stratum if um, I could get the node down in there better, but it's not going to fit. And I'll just reuse this again anyway. I don't have any shorter 
stick. So we're just going to use this taller one. the sound of crackling fluval. Can you hear it? Let me get my mic really close. Okay, listen. Is that not satisfying or what? I love the sound. That's when like the fluval is completely dry, the stratum and it, you like rehydrated, it makes that crackling sound. So yay, we have one gloriosum. And again, this leaf is going to straighten out and look a lot better once I actually get some hydration, like I was saying. What that was. And then there's several nodes along the stem that are going to end up growing or hopefully activating. And that's the most recent growth point. So that is that one. And then again, this one here, this leaf looks pretty good. And that one is down in there. And then that will hopefully activate some lower nodes uh, to grow and push out since we kind of cut away the front part of it. So we're going to see what happens with these guys. I don't see why they wouldn't make it. Honestly, I feel like they should do okay. Um, but who knows when you're propagating, you know, things can happen. I will probably most likely put these somewhere in here on a shelf because I'm running out of room. I will find a spot for these somewhere, probably under a Barina light. Um, and I'm not going to do anything special. Again, just keep an eye on the stratum level. And then once it dries all the way to the bottom, I'll just keep filling it back up. And yeah, they should start pushing new growth once they kind of get some healthy roots growing. And they'll definitely rehab, I feel like, pretty well in stratum. And then once I get enough healthy roots, I'm going to pot these together in a pot of lechuza pond. And I may add the baby that I showed you earlier in there, but we'll see. Uh, that is the plan for my Gloriosum. Hopefully third time is the charm. I, I feel like this is the third time that I've had to technically rehab it. So uh, it took me three tries on my Varicosum to grow it. And my Varicosum I've had for almost three years, I think now. Uh, and it's doing amazing. So if I can keep at it and grow my varicosum, which is a finicky phyllo, then I feel like I can eventually grow my gloriosum. And that's the thing, like if you struggle with a plant, like you definitely don't have to rehab it if you feel like you're stressed by it, uh, you don't wanna deal with it. There's no nothing wrong with that if you wanna start over and just uh, chuck the plant for your own mental health and start over and maybe purchase a new one. You know, maybe it's just, Maybe the one that you got just wasn't healthy initially and it's nothing really that you've done. You just, some plants are just not healthy plants initially and sometimes it happens and I don't know, you just, you do everything that you can and it doesn't matter. Sometimes some plants just don't make it and that's totally okay. I um, enjoy rehabbing. I enjoy watching plants come back. I, uh, I don't know, I just really enjoy that aspect of rehabbing plants. So I like to do it and I find it therapeutic for me because seeing a really sad plant and then watching it grow back into something amazing, it just brings me so much joy. So I enjoy rehabbing plants. I know it's definitely not for everyone and it can definitely stress people out. Uh, so do what's, you know, just best for you. Because, yeah, you definitely don't want to feel stressed by your plants. So for our little um, tray of, you know, little rhizomes here, I'm going to sprinkle, since I'm putting this into soil, I don't know if this is a good idea or not, 
putting it straight into soil since I have unhealthy roots to kind of begin with here, but I'm gonna put it into soil. I'm sprinkling some mycorrhizae on the root system because I love this stuff. I, I use this on root systems that need a little bit of help because I feel like it really uh, encourages growth on the roots. So that's why I like it. I really try to use it in every plant that I repot that needs it. Needs a little extra help. So we are going with our new soil mix. Put a little bit on the bottom like that. And then we're gonna start piling these in here. And it's okay if you bury some of the new leaves underneath the soil cause they'll pop out anyway. Just gonna sprinkle all those around. And I don't know if this rattlesnake calathea is going to do well or not. Like, I don't know if the fungal issue is going to come back or not. I have no idea. It'll definitely be a test to see what happens with it. Now, since this isn't Fox Farm, I don't have too many nutrients in the soil. I did add worm castings, which can act as a gentle fertilizer. Uh, very, very gentle, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some Osmocote. I actually need to fertilize most of my plants again, cause I added that, I tested out that different fertilizer in like February, and I started adding it in my repots throughout like March, April, and May even, I think. And then I switched back to using just Osmocote. And then I was having, you know, root rot issues and the fungal issues. So um, I feel like I had so much luck last summer with Osmocote. So I'm just going back to it. Part of me wants to like test out a liquid fertilizer and see how it goes. Cause I feel like it's nice having the Osmocote in there, but again, I feel like some plants that I said I was gonna repot, I haven't repotted yet, which means I probably haven't fertilized them yet. And they're probably not getting nutrients that they need. Um, although I enjoy slow release and it's easier for me, part of me wants to test out a liquid and maybe just see, I don't know. We'll see, I'm always open to trying new things. I just don't want it to be time consuming and feel like I have to add something in my water all the time because maybe I could use a liquid every once in a while and then add just a tiny bit of slow release in the soil. That way, if I don't feel like fertilizing with a liquid every time I water, then it'll still have some nutrients in the soil. So I might consider that. So if you use a liquid fertilizer, let me know which ones that you like down below or that you would like me to test out. Uh, Cause I would be happy to test one just to see how it performs maybe just in my environment and under my care. Uh, I am kind of curious on that. All right, she looks so cute now. She's flipping me off. <laughs> uh, let's water this in real quick. Let that continue to drain a little bit. 
So yeah, that is my little rehab sesh. I know it was only two plants. I really wanted to do more, but that's okay. We will have uh, more like kind of rehab situations. Uh, maybe not necessarily rehabs. I feel like a lot of my sad plants have gotten taken care of. I think these are some of the last few that were remaining that were really sad. I do have some like chop back projects I want to do. Like I want to completely chop my Milano and, um, you know, there's a lot of props that I need to pot up and stuff. So I'll probably work on that here. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, definitely let me know down in the comments. I think going forward, this one, I will just water like normal when it gets mostly dry, put it back under the Brina light and just keep an eye on it. If I feel like the fungal issue is continuing, continuing to spread, then I'll probably spray it with a fungicide at that point and go from there. But if it doesn't do well, then I'm not going to stress about it. I'll probably get a new one at some point because I do really like the rattlesnake calathea. And as far as these guys and stratum, again, they should do really well and their leaves should rehydrate within a few hours, I imagine. You guys saw when I did the Monstera propagation video, the leaves perked up in a matter of hours as soon as they were able to uptake some nutrients. So I feel like these will do the same. Um, I will again water these when they get mostly dry, fill them up to the top. And then once they're pretty rooted, uh, we will, be potting these together in a container of pond. And I might add the baby that I showed you in there earlier, but we'll see. I'm not sure if I wanna add them together, add that one together with this one. I might leave that one in soil, but who knows? <laughs> but yes, I hope this was helpful and you enjoyed. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys and I will talk to you soon.